Good evening, guys. Uh, my name is Rolando Joseph Gonzalez, and this is my week five summary uh, screencasting. So first, I'm going to be talking about the activities that we did of the week. Uh, we're going to start by introducing the circuit symbols and their meanings, uh, the analysis tools that we used, uh, starting with Mesh, Nodal, Tavanin, and Norton theory theorems. Kirchhoff's and the super and we also worked on Arduinos during the week so I'm going to be talking about those as well uh, starting off with the circuit symbols as you can see right here uh, we have the independent sources which are these right here the dependent sources which are kind of like uh, a diamond like this just means the current flow current flow and then uh, we have the battery in the cell, which is this symbol right here, the international symbol. Uh, you have one that is longer than the other, and then the symbol for the capacitor is the, the they are um, equally as in length. So there's that. So talking about Kirchhoff's uh, current law. Um, basically, uh, it, it, it has two laws. It's the loop rule and the junction rule. Uh, if we have the loop rule, it just states that if we have a circuit kind of similar to this with two battery sources, we follow these um, equations, which is battery push from the battery 1 minus change in voltage times resistor 1 minus the change in voltage times resistor 2 minus change in voltage times resistor 3 is equal to 0 same thing with the battery 2 so uh, you can basically use this as a system of equations and um, find your unknowns and then the junction rule just states that I1 plus I3 equals I2 here's I1 here's I2 and then I3 is right here is I3 Now the mesh analysis, uh, it will always flow clockwise regardless of the power battery source. This bothered me a lot because it didn't make much sense. Um, if you can see that the two loops are, the current is flowing in the opposite direction because of the battery sources, but somehow you're just supposed to follow it and they end up following, flowing clockwise. So step one is just to draw the meshes. Step two is to solve the easy ones first. They're typically closer to the battery source. And then we write uh, Kirchhoff's voltage law for the two remaining loops, and then we just solve. So um, there's that. Noto analysis just follows Kirchhoff's current law, the potential difference between two nodes of a circuit. Uh, step one, we set our reference node. All of the the nodes are measured to respect this one reference node and the reference node is equal to zero volts. Step two, assign node names to the rest of the nodes. Step three, solve easy nodes first. The nodes with the voltage source connected to the reference node. Step four, we use Kirchhoff's current law for each node using Ohm's law as well. And Step five, we solve the resulting system of equations for all node voltages. And to end it, uh, solve for the currents using Ohm's law. <coughs> uh, the the banding and Norton theory was uh, something that was kind of hard for me to understand, but this is what I took away from it. It just states that if there is a combination of cells and resistances, have two terminals they can be replaced by a single voltage source in which we call E and a single resistor R. E has value of open circuit voltage from the end of the terminals and R is uh, E divided by the current with the terminals short circuited. <clears throat> now the circuit super analysis uh, is it's pretty big uh, depending on the circuit as well. Uh, 
the easiest way to look at it is just if we uh, following these steps right here start farthest from the voltage source that's step one step two is to reduce redraw at a single R so if you can see right here what we're basically doing is we start from farthest which is this one right here and we combine these and then uh, we follow the the uh, Kirchhoff's current law I believe and then it's just reduce reduce the same thing with this one reduce and it will reduce and combine reduce and combine reduce and combine and we use the equations like the junction rule and then we cal calculate each resistance and the total resistance and then we work back we start to work back and this you get those now for the Arduinos uh, the, the only one we did during that week uh, basically we learned what an Arduino was uh, which is this thing right here this is a breadboard uh, right here now this circuit uh, was named the spaceship interface we found it on the Arduino book it guided us it gave us the code yeah, and how to like program it so basically we just programmed it and all we had to do was uh, we, we set up some resistors right here as you can see we give it our power source we use a button and as you can see right here the green bulb is lighted when we press it the red ones would start blinking blinking and it just go back to the green one uh, it just meant that you could like well what we decided is that we were just dropping nukes into space for some odd reason and well we built it in Fingercat and we built the search for ourselves it was nothing much but it was kind of fun there's so many things that we can do with Arduinos and that's just it well thank you guys very much have a good night hope you enjoyed